What's up, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. Today we have with us Lucy Dahl and Joshua Lewis. It's about, going on. We're about to shoot a hot scene for Hot Wives Cheating today. A brand new site that I just came up with and uh, just launched about two months ago. It's not even on the hub yet. You know what I'm talking about. So we have Lucy Dahl. Hi. What's up, girl? What's up? So you have been in the biz for a while now but you took a hiatus yeah so what happened Mm -hmm. i took about a six or seven year break i've been stripping camming and and doing only fans and then i decided to give my career a boost and come back and have sex and work with all the professionals again Wow, it's been that long. Time flies, right? Yeah, it's crazy. And I still look very young. So people are shocked when I say I've been out of mainstream porn for so many years. They're like, how? Yeah, we just got approved for Team Skeet Sis Loves Me. So you're still stepsister age. Yeah, (laughs) I can go both ways now. Like, this will be my first time playing a wife this Ah, scene. So so that's pretty cool. Awesome. So you're becoming a woman in porn. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. crazy. I was in high school. I was like a freshman in high school. I was probably in middle school when you started. Yeah, Six, you seven were. years ago? Yeah. <laughs> I remember, I remember uh, when you were brand new. Yeah, it's weird coming back now and the guys are younger than me. Like, I used to always be no matter what the youngest and now I come to set and there's guys I work with that are younger and girls. And I'm like in the middle now. So the whole time you took a hiatus, you're still doing all the stripping and stuff. Is OnlyFans a new thing? Um, I've never had a normal job. It's always been adult entertaining. Um, so I don't think OnlyFans was around or if it was, it wasn't like in my face at least. I started OnlyFans when the pandemic hit and the strip clubs closed. Okay. Yeah, because I like to have multiple hustles. So I always had stripping and camming. But then once stripping was eliminated, I was like, I can't put all this pressure on webcam. That's going to stress me out. I'm going to get bored. So I added OnlyFans to have another income going. It seems like a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon when COVID happened. Yeah, I wish I would have done it earlier. And honestly, that's the best thing to do, having more than one income. If you're bringing in multiple streams, that's the best way to do it, because if one falls off, then you have five others to look at. So Yeah, nowadays you have so many platforms to put your content on. You kind of got to put your eggs in a lot of different baskets. Because if not, you're leaving money on the table, right? It's just a matter of which ones are going to work for you the best. You know, and for me, I don't like to interact. So I like the platforms that are more just like set it and forget it kind of shit. And other people are more like interactive and sell customs and stuff like that. Everybody's different. So platforms, uh, you know, may suit the one person and not the next so you have to be specific about what's what your needs are and if you're not spending money you're not making money that's right uh i need to start actually investing more and in not just the shoots but traffic i know you pay to get your shit promoted right yeah yeah because i i jumped on late on the only fans thing too and i just recently started doing trades and stuff so I'm starting to shoot more amateur OnlyFans style stuff, but uh, it's it's a new thing, and I have to I have to start growing it in a different way that I would a pay site. Yeah, it's, it's different for guys. Yeah, also. it's totally different. I mean, you gotta put money in the like Twitter promo, Instagram promo, OnlyFans promo. I mean, there's promo services you can buy for like anything to just push your pages a little bit more and make more money. Yeah, I need to get those hookups from you. I got you. And so what do you do? Do you pay anybody to promote yourself or you, did you just uh, start tweeting and it blew up? Um, yeah, I don't have anyone I pay and I don't have any OnlyFans managers. I do it all myself. 
I get a lot of people from webcam because the site I cam on is like the only site on cam that you can promote your OnlyFans because I think that the owner is associated with OnlyFans. So I always put my link when I cam and then social media and then I have business cards. So at the strip club, I pass out my business cards and I travel and dance so I get a big audience from that. And so even though you were in the industry before, you went to AVN for your first time, right? Yeah, um, when I was 18, I don't know if you guys could tell, I was like super shy. So I didn't go to the AVNs that year. I was like too shy, but now I'm more social and confident. So I went this year for the first time and it was really fun. And uh, we were talking about it earlier. Content creators are a big thing now to the point to where you don't really notice the porn stars anymore at AVA because there's so many content creators and webcam girls. Yeah, they're definitely trying to get in with the mainstream industry people. A lot of them, they definitely want to fuck us. That's for sure. And and uh, the cam industry <laughs> owns AVN now, so it's yeah, it's owned by what my free cams MFC, right? Yeah, oh, I yeah. think they have for a while though. Yeah, yeah, it's it's grown so much to where, like I said, you don't even notice the porn stars so much. They had a lot of booths, but I before I joined the industry again, I actually was possibly gonna go with uh, my free cams because I go to their parties and stuff. I cam for them, so I go to like. They're, they have these social parties where all the girls camp together in Vegas, and they do it every few months. So I've been to, like, two, and this was before I went back into the industry. So I heard all the girls talking about AVN, and they're like, yeah, we go with my free cams. Like, So I was telling myself I was going to go to AVN this year with my free cams, and then before that happened, I ended up joining porn again, so... I ended up going with OC Molly, my agency. But I did stop by the My Free Cams booth and say hi to the girls. Nice. Yeah. And so Josh is also with OC Modeling. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, OC it's Modeling like, has a good roster. It's like a little uh, family, you could say. Yeah. And one thing to add on about AVNs. It was... So from what I've heard before, it's like a really big fan convention. But now it seems more so like a meet meet everybody fest like it's cam models content creators porn stars and directors and um brands like that rather than just fans like i've probably seen more like creators and everyone put together than fans themselves honestly yeah yeah my intentions going to avns since this was a chill year for me i'm not i'm so new like when I signed, when I was doing my agency photos, that was like the same day nominations were happening. So this wasn't a year for me to have nominations or do awards, but this year was a year for me to make a statement that I'm back and get some collabs with talent, like meet all the talent and let directors see my face and see I'm here. Which and is a very pretty face, by thank the way. You. And yeah, and let the uh, fans see, like, I'm really back. So it was definitely a networking thing for me more than anything else. Yeah. And Josh, so, and you got, you had some, like, t-shirts and mm -hmm. merch and stuff? Yeah, I had a couple things for my uh, new website and some Joshua Lewis branded things. And I gave them out to a couple of the girls and sold a couple. Did you have any super fan moments where you got to meet your super fans? Uh, yeah, there were like two of them that walked up to me and they were like, oh my God, I love your swap scenes. Shout out Team Skeet. But they're like, the swap scenes, dude. You're like designated uh, step bro or like stepson. I'm like, oh my God. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, it's true. The like, younger you are, like that. the younger you are as a guy, the more step shit you get. So you're going to be pretty much working with MILFs, right? Yeah. And if you're an older hard. guy, you get booked with the uh, 18 to 23 girls. Yeah, it's like I'm in this like weird 
period because like i'm young for the industry but i get booked with younger looking girls like lucy and then all of a sudden i'm working with people that are like twice my age playing well, my just, mom just enjoy it because one day you'll wake up and you'll be a stepdad <laughs> <laughs> don't remind me <laughs> <laughs> it happens it goes by pretty quick right it's like the older you get like the quicker time goes by right yeah so but you only got prettier thank you you actually what they call filled out yeah you got a nice big booty now i noticed thank I like you that. Yeah, I like when people compliment me, like my glow up. Yeah, it's it's really, you're one of the hottest girls on the roster for sure on OC, without a doubt. Thank and you, you just, you know, you just popped in recently. Yeah. So welcome back. Thanks. Yeah, she was working a lot too. I mean, we've shot two other scenes already. Yeah, I this. played his girlfriend. Nice. And my um sex spot. So Wait, you guys are. Yeah, you did play my sex spot. So you guys are excited to have sex again? Yeah. I hope. Yeah, absolutely. So I think today is going to be epic. What do you guys think? Yeah. Oh, for sure. So what's your favorite thing about her? Favorite thing? Um, hmm. I like how sweet she is and like how open is she just, is. Her voice is so <laughs> sensual. Yeah. And I when, when we shot that. together the first time, she wasn't like super shy or anything. She was like, hi, I'm Lucy. And feel like we vibe together pretty well and she seems like even though she's important she's kind of a good girl yeah a little bit you know just a tiny bit i yeah. was noticing that earlier she yeah. has some morals yeah she's she holds like, herself we well. were talking about some of the crazy porn and shit and she's like i would never do that mm -hmm. i'm like i can relate like there's a lot of shit i would never do to girls but somehow girls like that and, yeah uh, it's just not my thing though yeah she carries herself super well i like well, that like you put your foot down when it comes that. to booking you're like i won't do this yeah definitely i want to make sure all my experiences are good and i know how to stand up for myself and i know how to set boundaries what about the family taboo stuff you cool with that yeah like that doesn't cross my the daddy boundaries. stuff yeah that doesn't cross my boundaries like okay it's just role play, though. Right? Yeah, it's acting, so. and honestly, like acting's fun. Right, until so it gets too perfect, they start putting you in diaper stuff and stuff like that. That's a little <laughs> too far. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you'll see some weird shit on like mini vids and uh, X videos. Even there's some crazy shit that I thought was illegal. Yeah, and I'm like, you're allowed to post that. Pure taboo too. They kind of like start to cross those lines a little bit oh yeah and uh you know there was a team skeet site that i shot a couple times it was called foster tapes God. that didn't last long i've heard about that a couple <laughs> times it was very <laughs> dark yeah hey we adopted you for this <laughs> and the money that's uh, yeah yeah they were, that's bad. exactly what the premise was they wanted the check and they wanted the sex what other ones did they have Team Ski got rid of? Like Mormon girls? Uh, oh, I, I shot know. But like, I know girls like will not, a lot of girls won't shoot the hijabs stuff anymore and they keep asking me for it. But I'm like, bro, the agent told me they won't do it anymore because the last girl got death threats. You know who just started doing that and who? I did their first one for them? Who? New Biles. They did a hijab? Yeah. Wow. Like, the first scene I did it with, um, lily hall from okay. east coast yeah and how did she um she's done them a couple times she's florida say, talent some girls are down with it like yeah penelope woods she shot like eight of them bitches like she's like yeah there's gotta be girls fuck. that are down to me i feel like it's uh empowering women because yeah maybe it offends some people but like not everybody should be forced to have an ideology or a religious view you should be able to have your own choice to make your own choices you know freedom yeah even if you know i mean they've been freedom of speech right you should be able to talk shit about anybody's religion they've been protesting a lot too yeah the past so couple months things are happening now porn porn actually helps women in that way i think it's like yes they can be sexual too behind closed doors yeah. the hijab comes off and she starts sucking dick i you know <laughs> that that brings me on to the part where i didn't realize how many girls actually watched porn 
until I started getting DMs when I started <laughs> shooting porn. And it's like civilian girls, I guess, girls that aren't in porn, like, oh my god, I just got off to your video. Oh my god, I want to fly out and like, fuck you. I want to do this and that. And so I'm like, how many times shit. have, have you, you done it them? yet? Sure, you have. I'm not going to say no. Fuck well, yeah, you said yes. I mean, I make sure they get tested and stuff, you know? Yeah. I'm not going to be stupid about it, but. I went to London once. I think it's the... the girl just to fuck a girl. Yeah. Do they catch feelings? She was a super fan. Uh, no, because they know my job and stuff like that. They know what I'm doing. And I think the thing is that it's enticing because it's like, okay, I go on the set today and I know what's going to happen. And like, I know the girl I'm shooting with and I've seen her on the internet. But when it's like somebody I don't know at all, I don't know, have any idea about you. It's like... <laughs> entice a little bit more enticing like today i'm excited to obviously do the thing with you but it's like never seen this girl's body before well like what does you she look skype like? or she wants to do facetime this. i feel yeah. the opposite i have a huge fear of like fucking guys that i can't look up their dick before oh i guess it's like i'm scared you. now and then i feel like i have like a I feel like it's like would be so embarrassing if then their dick was small. But what I, guy does not have their dick on their Twitter now? Like that's in porn. A lot Come of on. people. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm scared to fuck people that aren't in porn. Like, have I'm scared of like when they whip it out. What's what it's gonna be? Are you talking about like non-porn? Dudes? Yeah, like oh, he's okay. saying it's exciting to fuck uh, non-porn girls because it's like a mystery. Mm -hmm. For yeah, me, that's scary. Yeah, because they're not going to show scary. you the vagina on cam. I want to just, like, go look. <laughs> I mean, I've had FaceTime hey, sex I've before. Had, actually, I've had it. I had the girl once, like, just send me a straight-up pussy pic, and I was like, all right, I'm coming over. <laughs> and that was, like, a back-in-the-day fucking, like, Hotmail Messenger hookup. Mm -hmm. And, like, somehow, she lived around the block from me. It's like, I don't know how horny I was to be looking up girls on hot on the fucking... MSN Messenger, but I got laid a couple of times. <laughs> like those little ads? Like you used to just be able to search by location, just like Tinder. Mm -hmm. And they had pictures you just clicked on their Messenger. If they're online, it just popped up on their screen. Like Facebook? Or is it like those ads on like... No, it was literally, uh, literally you just searched profiles. Like, oh. and they, like age, sex, location. Okay. And like how many miles they are from you. But it was not supposed to be dating. It was just... You could search people. Is it like the pop-ups on Pornhub where it's just like, this girl's That's this I many thought. minutes away? No, this was legit oh. like Skype or something, but you could look people up. <laughs> oh, so ICQ was the same way back in the day. People actually used it to get laid. Wow. Like, so when I got into porn, all the webmasters talked on ICQ. This is an old messenger thing. But I never tried to use it for sex. I think people use kick now. Kick? But, like, it's full of fucking spam. Yeah. I used to. Uh, oh, yeah, it's full of hookers, right? <laughs> I've I, had those, too. And, like, dude, Tinder is full of hookers now, especially in Vegas. Like, I tried it once, and, bro, they're all trying to get money. I was like, yeah. what the fuck? Is I used to use kick, too, but that was, like, back before Snapchat. Like, in middle school, that's how we, like, kids got away with sending certain things and whatnot but could you and search then it was girls? snapchat after that did they have profiles where you could search them up and no but it was like girls you would chat with like from school or like surrounding schools and you know that was the place See, that's kinda... the one thing like elon musk hasn't thought of it was like search girls in your location and just like dm them <laughs> they, they pop really up in a tesla that. Outside your house. <laughs> With the messenger, there was no... I don't know if there was even a block then. Maybe there was, but you had to, like... You had to go out of your way to do it, right? So so now, you know, it's not as easy, but... Because to get in somebody's DMs, a lot of people will only let friends talk to them, right? Yeah. On the old messenger, you just, like... You could just be like, hey, what's up to anybody? What's going on? Hmm. Like, here's know. a picture of my dick. <laughs> That's one way to get yeah, to it, I, I was guess. talking to a girl on uh, MSN Messenger, and with five minutes, I got a pussy pic. I was like, she's like, my parents are gone. 
<laughs> Whatever. They passed the <laughs> law in Cali. Away. You can't send nudes now. Unsolicited in LA. Yeah, well, she would have went to jail. <laughs> so <laughs> you could charge her. This is back in the day. I want to say like 2009. Damn. And there was Yahoo Messenger. How old was I in 2009? I was like eight. Yeah, you weren't even jerk. Where well, you probably were jerking off at that age. Uh, I think I was like eleven. I think, whatever. So I- how, what, like, how old were you the first time you saw porn? Like eleven. I had the fucking old ass iPod Touch. I think I was about the same age, but it was it was Playboy's, and then I found VHSs under my dad's dresser. It's nice being an adult now, watching it. Like, when I don't have to clear my history now. <laughs> but we had tapes back then, so they never knew. But my dad yeah. would specifically stop it at a certain spot so he knew where it was. Oh, God. So I'd always, like, look at the... I would reset the counter. I was smart. Uh-huh. I was like, I had to always set it back to zero when I was done. <laughs> so you just push counter reset, right? This is, They were way around it. Uh-huh. I would watch his porno, like, jerk off. And then I was done. I would re- rewind it to that exact spot so he didn't know I watched it. You learned that because he caught it before? Uh, because I was just a smart kid. Smooth criminal. Well, no, like, yeah, he would know. Like, he would know if I watched him. Like, because he couldn't prove it. But my stepmom was like, you've been watching his dad's dirty movies or whatever. I'm like, uh-huh. how the fuck did she know? And I was like, oh. They put it on, and it was uh, it was fast forwarded to the next scene. Oh no! Because <laughs> back then you had to fast forward and rewind to get the spots, and that's, when you stop the tape, it was just there. Jesus, that's Ooh. the most awkward part of like growing up as a guy. I feel like I don't know if like girls go through this at all, but like being a guy, and then you finally like get caught jacking off for the first time, <laughs> oh, or no. caught watching porn, or I told my mom you get like, put on the itching. spot. Just, it itches. Dude, like, she's I think, like it's perfectly natural i think i like i don't know i was probably like sending some type of picture when i was like younger or whatever and my mom like took my ipod or something for something and then like i had like dick pics on there and she's like what the <laughs> fuck is this da, 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 da. that's the thing kids and i was like have oh, ipads damn and- it like that's the most embarrassing thing Kids have cameras now. It's just really bad because you know they're making movies that are inappropriate yeah. on their devices. Technology is so different now. I went to the sex store a couple of days and I was surprised that there's DVDs still. Like there's a whole DVD well, look, section. Yeah, I found out from my DVD distributor that 60% of the country's USA still does not have high speed internet so there's a lot of rural areas that have to use dvd yeah. still so there's a gotcha. market yeah i was shocked i was like the, yeah what? you get a few blockbusters open and in, in like, cities and in like third third world countries too they're like yeah. heavily based dvds and stuff like somebody was telling me that most of the dvd sales are in like india or like one of the big populated countries over there yeah, they just don't have the infrastructure for high-speed internet, mm-hmm. so uh, it's much more. And when we had slow internet, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to the DVD, it's instant. There's no, there's nothing worse than jerking off and then waiting for it to buffer, to, to download the next part of the video. Oh, it'll just no. freeze up. Oh, fuck, I gotta wait. Like, another minute goes by, it'll play another minute. So, like, sometimes it gets ruined then because it buffers, like, at the time you're about to, like. N- yeah, I, I remember discs used to be the thing. I would still, I would rent all the pornos, copy them, burn them for my friends. I was, like, the porno guy. Like, Jay, give me some of those discs, man. I'm going to take them home. I'll give them back. Like, yeah, just borrow them, whatever. Like, so, uh, yeah. That was the thing. Like, you felt like a pirate. And now everything you can just steal it for free and no disc needed watch it on right? the internet i'm kind of glad there's still dvds because then i could still get some box covers right because you know box cover porn is dying yeah for yeah. sure and i feel like even conglomerates are dying like it's all but they're all turning into platforms 
they're gonna be like a porn flicks. Once Nubiles goes to a, like a, a a tube site, it's over. It's like all the companies are just gonna have their own tube site and a Netflix. It'll be like only the strong will survive, and all these companies will die, and you, then like maybe the hub will take over again. Do you think bigger companies will start like? buying smaller companies and make like streaming platforms it like happens. you know Every like netflix years. hulu disney plus like they're all competing like say like mind geek has one gamma has one and then some other company has like three streaming platforms but gamma's perform. doing it right now or they'll just yeah. take the director gamma's already doing that <laughs> nah shit yeah if i ever want to retire i'm gonna be like here you go gamma just cut me a check i'm out buy it i mean that's the way to go because um yeah. what joanna angel she yep, had her she company sold. and she sold it and she's living in new york living great life and doing whatever you know yeah because she sold her company and that's the way to go um i mean even like million millionaires and stuff i hear about they usually start like three to four companies and they sell like four of them or whatever and they make a bunch of money and then they partner with a couple people and they build a huge ass company and then they just retire from there and you're she's making out like a bandit because she made her money 10 times over and still sold the company mm -hmm. that's the ideal situation yeah, yeah. so website get rid of it start a new one do it again do it again so yeah i mean get the most money you can but right now i'm getting so many licensing deals and i think a lot of the content creators don't understand the other side of the business where you can get all these licensing deals, DVD deals, broadcast deals. If you just have your paperwork IDs in order and then you shoot a certain way yep. because shooting with an iPhone on a tripod and just with a ring light with no story or anything is not going to get you those deals. Absolutely. And you know, if anybody's watching this, what do you think a good deal per scene would be or per se? -ish? So three to 500 is a licensing deal thing for, I think, two years for premium content. Mm -hmm. But like I've put my foot down and I've been real firm about it, real protective of my content. Of course. So I'm getting up to a grand per scene, which per per license. pretty much pays for my production. Oh yeah, per license, yeah. But and I, that's promo for you too, right? But I do a lifetime for that rate. Mm -hmm. Is that promo? It's for like you, you too, can though? use it on the internet for that amount of time. I just did a twenty twenty scene deal to where I did a thousand a scene with no middleman, straight to me. Nobody nice. took a cut. Uh, do you get promo off them licensing licensing your content, or do they put their own logo and whatever on it? And title it whatever um obviously they're gonna promote the brand they've mm -hmm. had the channel on their stuff before um but i didn't even care i was just like if you're gonna pay me that per scene yeah use it however you want of course yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not yeah i'm getting i've made my money 10 times over sure. and i'm getting paid back for all the cost and one licensing deal that's pretty fucking awesome yeah no, that's not bad at all. And I'm getting several licensing deals. It's not just the tube sites and the the ad revenue and the memberships. It's okay. also the licensing deal it's deals. So that's mm -hmm. why and broadcast. So that's why I shoot a certain way, and that's why the hot wives cheating that we're shooting today is very sought after by broadcast mm -hmm. because they they love the the, the style of it, the, the setup. It's not anything too crazy. You can put it on late at night. You know, it, it'll late night. Vibe. It'll fit on Showtime easily. Yeah. You know, so like it's not too hardcore. It's pretty much passion porn. So mm -hmm. something I can sit down and watch with like future girlfriend or something. Right. Everybody cool. can watch this. So we're about to shoot for Hot Wives Cheating today, guys. It's been great talking to you guys, getting to know you. So Hot Wives Cheating, just look it up. Google is your friend. Don't forget to like and subscribe, comment, share it with your friends. Peace out. See ya. Bye.